my demo and uh, this small session is about like intro to PNP reusable control. So who is not familiar with those? Uh, we have kind of two flavors of uh, reusable controls that uh, you can use free of charge uh, in uh, your solutions. Uh, one is uh, React controls. Uh, this is the set of controls that can be used in your, in let's say main body of your web part or in SharePoint framework extensions. And uh, the second type of controls we have is uh, reusable property pane controls uh, that can be used in uh, property panes for either web parts or uh, adaptive cards ex extensions as uh, well. So the main idea of these controls is you don't need to think about the kind of UI uh, and some uh, basic regular operations uh, related to SharePoint, for example, uh, like uh, many solutions need controls that will communicate with the SharePoint to uh, uh, request sites and uh, display some site picker or list picker or maybe details list or something like that. So instead of each time implementing these uh, controls in your solutions, you can just uh, reference our modules. These are N uh, NPM modules and uh, reuse these uh, controls in your solutions. So we have pretty neat uh, documentation for both uh, SPFX property controls and uh, SPFX React controls. If you go to the docs, you can go to uh, control sections in the menu and you will see that we have huge, huge number of different controls that uh, you can use in uh, your applications. Some of those can be pretty easy one. For example, web part title, it just provides you like small text area where you can kind of set your title. And if you are in read mode, uh, this will display in the similar way to out of the box web parts. Uh, but we also have some pretty complicated, pretty complex uh, components as well. For example, uh, tree view that you can use to display different trees in your components. We have different types of uh, charts. We have carousel as well that I'll be demoing uh, today. So many, many, many components that you can use in your web parts and uh, extensions. Same for Property controls, again, if you go to controls, you will see that uh, you have lots of controls in there. And uh, to be honest, uh, most of them are pretty similar to what you have in uh, React controls repo. The difference is in implementation. So property pane is a bit uh, different from kind of standard React control. You still can use uh, React controls in your property controls uh, bodies, but you should have some uh, additional implementations, uh, let's say contract uh, that uh, can be used by SPFX core to understand how to render your control, how to pass properties to your controls and how to react on the changes in your properties. So this kind of it from like documentation perspective, from a definition of what are these controls. And let's actually go to the actual demo and code how co you can use the uh, components and controls. So uh, let's imagine that you need to develop a web part that will display a carousel of images that are stored in some document library on your tenant. And uh, uh, it should be pretty flexible, so it's not tied to one specific uh, site or one specific document library. Uh, the author of the page should be able to select the site and the document library from where you need to grab these uh, pictures and display it as a carousel control. So if you start thinking about implementing all of that from scratch, it will be pretty complex tasks. So you will need to have some site picker uh, and uh, document library picker to understand where you should uh, request data from. Then you need to request these data, these pictures, and then you will also need to implement the carousel control with the standard carousel features like animation to uh, slide back and forth, uh, probably some uh, additional uh, functionality to display some additional content on hover and so on and so forth. So, and let me actually show you what I'm talking about. So I have this PNP carousel control in here. Uh, you can provide some title, hello world. As you can see right now, our web part is not uh, configured. So I click on configure. 
we go to the uh, property pane. I can select some site. We have a beautiful search in here. Uh, when the site is selected, uh, my select document library uh, component is enabled and I can select uh, the document library from here. And uh, this is the document library picker. Uh, so it doesn't show you any additional list on the same site. And as soon as I select the uh, document library from here, I can see the carousel. So it has some additional functionality on hover. So it provides some additional text and uh, it has buttons to go back and forth from uh, one slide to another. And uh, if I go to the preview mode, it also works in the same way. You see the title, you see the uh, carousel, you see the uh, automatic animation, everything that you can expect from this kind of control. And uh, from the data perspective, in this carousel document library, we have the image, uh, we have some title, we have some description and URL. So nothing specific, nothing unique from like, control perspective, just the standard metadata that you can have in uh, your document library. So again, if you start developing this control from scratch, it might take you a while to develop all these uh, kind of UI, all these requests that you need to do. But if you're using PNP controls, it's pretty easy. And let me actually show you the code. So this is our web part. Pretty standard one. If you look at this one, uh, we have few properties to uh, store like sites, selected list ID or document library ID and uh, title. Our render method is pretty small. So here we just have, we are creating the PNP carousel. It's our re custom uh, React component. We are providing some properties and uh, I'll go back to that. And uh, the interesting part here is property pane configuration. As you saw, we have a site picker and also a list picker in our property pane, but we don't actually need to develop anything custom. We just call property field site picker and property field list picker. These two functions are imported from SPFX property controls, and you just need to pass some standard properties like context properties, your label, what should happen when the property has changed, and some additional configuration like what are initial sites for you. Uh, this is, for example, the filter to display only a document library, so you can select the base template for the list, and that's it, your uh, property pane is configured. You don't need to do anything else. Now let's go to our React component that we have, PNP Carousel. Again, here it's pretty standard. The only actual logic that we have in here is this dot get images. And let me go to this one first. In this dot get images, we are checking if site URL property is set if list ID is set, and we are doing just one REST API request to SharePoint to collect our documents, our pictures from the document library. And after that, we are just kind of massaging this data to create iCarousel image interfaces or instances that will, can be passed to a carousel control. And now let's go to our render method to show what's happening in here. And again, the render is pretty small. First here, we have this webpart title that is imported from uh, PNP React controls. So again, you don't need to implement any logic like, hey, in edit mode, you need to display a text area. And in read mode, you just need to display the text itself with the specific uh, styling. Everything is done for you in the control itself. You don't need to do anything. If we don't have list ID and site URL, so this is the situation where when your web part is not configured yet, again, we are using placeholder component from the NP React controls library, and it will display this beautiful kind of placeholder for you with a button that can open the property pane. And then if actually your web part is configured, we are displaying the main content. And in the main content, again, it just practically one component, one control here, carousel. In carousel, you're providing element. It's pretty flexible property. You can provide either 
your own GSX elements, React components in there, or you can provide the uh, iCarousel image props uh, components. In that case, Carousel itself will be rendering you know, like a standard UI for each and every uh, slide, or you can also provide just single React component. In that case, you will need to implement on move next clicked and on move prep clicked. In that case, you will just replace this React component. Uh, and with this flexibility, you can basically have not even images in your carousel, but instead of that, you can provide some rich UI or some text or whatever you want, and each slide can be actually different. Again, you're just providing few properties in there, how exactly you want uh, your carousel to behave, uh, where you want your buttons, uh, how you want these buttons to be displayed, some additional styling for the control, uh, if you want uh, infinite loop of your animation or no, and that's basically it. You don't need to do anything else. Again, if you're thinking about like implementing everything from scratch, it can easily take you a day or two to implement all this stuff. But here we have kind of like 100 lines of code in our component. We have additional like 80 lines of code in our web property, uh, web part, sorry. And uh, at the end, we have this beautiful control and we also have the configuration ready for it as well. So this is the main power of PNP reusable controls. You can kind of think about uh, your business needs, about implementation of your specific scenarios, and uh, don't care too much about the UI and about st standard operations with the uh, SharePoint. Uh, if you're using a PNP reusable controls, your controls will behave similarly to out-of-the-box UI in SharePoint and uh, will provide you a lot of functionality that you don't need to implement each and every time in uh, your custom solutions. And that's all I have. Fantastic. Great demo, Alex. Yep, PMP reusable controls. Great way of accelerating your SharePoint framework development and you know give yourself a jump start as well. Having used them myself in the past, I know how fantastic they are. So if you've yet to use um, one of the, the reusable controls, I definitely encourage you to check out the repository, check out the documentation and, and give them a try.